Yep, there it is. Welcome. We're missing some people here today. Uh, Harold Crothers, Dennis Harmsworth, are they not uh, here today, Jill? Okay. Dennis is present. Dennis is right oh, there. Oh, Dennis is present? Oh, good. Uh, here, let me see if I can go into a uh, full screen view here. Gallery view. Oh, now I see everybody. Well, thank you very much for coming uh, this afternoon, uh, folks. Uh, we uh, have got some reports from staff that uh, appear to be uh, very interesting. We'll call the meeting to order at 1.30 sharp. Is there any member of this uh, committee declaring a pecuniary interest or the general nature thereof? Seeing none, we'll uh, move in on. Uh, a Additions to agenda, are there any subjects uh, that the committee would wish us to add to the agenda under new business? I'll just give you a moment to reflect on that. Please raise your hand if there is. Okay, we'll move on uh, to number four of the agenda. Uh, Greg, uh, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, you're gonna give us a recreation master plan update uh, and uh, we'll uh, give you the floor. Okay, and thank you, Mayor Allen. Um, I think uh, Sheila wanted me to talk about the Glencoe downtown. Was that, or were I to explain about the master plan as well? Oh, I'd like both if you can, if you have time. Sure, so um, with regards to the facilities and rec master plan, the particular uh, document is now complete and has been accepted by council. Um, really sort of uh, outlines the uh, direction that the Facilities and Recreation Department uh, is sort of a guiding document for the future. Um, you know, and it does tackle all types of areas, including volunteers, including our own facilities, programming within the municipality, um, that type of stuff. Um, does look at, uh, you know, current trends that are out there in Canada. Um, just for an example, would, would be walking. I mean, certainly walking opportunities, no matter where you do a Facilities and Rec Master Plan these days is, is pretty much the, the top uh, recreational activity that people wish to see. So anytime we can provide walking opportunities in natural areas or trails or even on uh, roadsides, that type of stuff, uh, um, extremely important. Um, so that document is out there and available and I would encourage uh, this group to uh, read the, the end results. Um, we'll just mention a little bit about the actual public input that went into that document, which was extensive um, and included focus group sessions with all our partners uh, and included uh, sessions with council, with staff. Um, and we uh, as well um, went to all the members of the general public through the online surveys and our virtual open houses to try to gather input into the creation of that particular document, which was extremely uh, extremely important. Um, they also met with the Recreation Committee and um, so all that information was brought forward and then sort of melted together with all the trends and, and um, associated activities that are going on in the in the province and in Canada and its specific recommendations are located in the rear of that particular document and the executive summary which outlines sort of the guiding direction that the Facilities and Rec Department uh, will be heading uh, in the future. So um, I, I, when I look at uh, some of the things that are happening right now with the, you know, the new group in Wardsville, um, you know, wanting to get together to, um, you know, beautify their own community. This is a, this is one of the particular areas that was located in that document. And uh, what's happening in Wardsville is very consistent with, uh, with uh, volunteers and, and people working and beautifying their communities alongside our staff. Uh, yeah, here at Southwest Middlesex. So generally that's a little bit about that particular document. It is a very good read because it uh, captures the whole program. Um, you know, the only other thing I'll mention there in that particular document, there's certainly um, a fair bit of information on Southwest Middlesex residents owning their own facilities and moving into the future, whether it's through development or it is through uh, just uh, the establishment of new parks and new green space. Um, that um, the residents would like to see us own our own properties moving forward and not piggyback on other people's properties, that type of thing. So it did address the issue of, you know, if you took an example of the um, situation in Wardsville, 
uh, with regards to the three buildings that we own there, uh, the fire station, the library, and the museum. And it recommended a new multi-use facility in Wardsville, um, which would accommodate the library, would uh, accommodate a new community center, as well as the fire department all on one site. And uh, um, also some green space so that we may have, you know, we could have a dog park or walking space for people. And uh, sort of that preferred location for that particular facility is just uh, about uh, Haggerty and Talbot uh, in Wardsville and just a little bit north of there. So generally that's kind of the thrust of the, uh, of the facilities and rec master plan. Um, I don't know if anybody has any questions about that, but certainly I can, I'm going to have a little bit more to say about the downtown and Glencoe as well. Okay, well, we'll uh, finish off that rec. Uh, committee, uh, any questions uh, you wish to direct uh, to Greg on this? We'll watch for hands, give you a moment of reflection. Evidently not, Greg. Okay, so we can go on and... Uh, sure, so being more... Specific, yeah, and so when we talk about... Uh, Sorry, my phone's going off. Um, I would just be a little bit more specific about sort of the, you know, the downtowns itself. So, you know, we are running programs in the downtowns, so everything from benches and um, um, garbage cans to, um, you know, our flower pots or I call them flower pots. I guess that's flower baskets would be a better, a better description of them. Um, you know, those pertain flags and et cetera. You know, we go through a whole year of, of a lot of stuff changing in the downtowns, whether it's Melbourne or Wardsville, Appen or here in Glencoe. Um, those particular um, programs like the flower basket program is now, um, you know, we, we, we scaled that back a little bit this year simply because we, we were into, the program originally started sort of as a revenue neutral program where people would support baskets and the baskets then be put up in the communities and taken care of by the facilities and rec staff. Um, that particular program when it was originally established was self-sustaining so that if people bought and, and donated uh, to get a basket, they got a basket and that basket was put up um, within their communities. Uh, so if somebody in Appen did it, that basket was put up in Appen. So, Programs changed a little bit because we we've now, um, you know, we have made it a self-sustaining uh, program. So last year we had pretty close to seventy people support the program, and seventy baskets went up, or more than that went up last year. And this year we've uh, we've made it just a little bit different because now we're going to be buying new recognition signs for each basket that goes up, so that uh, the ones that there before were old puck board that somebody cut out little trains on them and painted them black and put them up but um, we now have high cut working on uh, on our new signs and, and those will go up with the uh, basket program itself. So we do have basket programs we've got the uh, you know the flags and all the amenities that we put in the downtowns itself. That happens in all four of those communities um, and certainly don't have to make people aware of the extra work that's been going on in Glencoe because of the state of the uh, sidewalks, the state of the trees that were in place for all those years, um, and the old lighting poles that were downtown. So <clears throat> we made the switch um, and certainly council approved the installation of the new light poles in, in the downtown in Glencoe. Those are now up. I will mention that there are four poles or three or four poles that are located outside the, just out in front of the no frills. Uh, we already bought those poles and we're just waiting for Gerber to put those up. So they're going to be taking down the old poles and using the existing bases and putting up some very nice fun aluminum poles there uh, in that section of town. So those lights have now been installed uh, and they're up and working. Um, they're beautiful and they're made for the downtown. So those particular poles can accommodate all the different amenities and stuff that happen in the downtowns and they're made specifically for municipalities. So whether they're holding flags or whether they're holding flower baskets, um, um, they can accommodate all that. They have their own electrical controls at the bottom of the poles. So we kind of moved the poles into the modern day world, which was great. Um, they're beautiful and they look nice. Um, the other part of that project was because we had so many issues with trip and falls in the downtown and we had the decorative bricks down there and the trees that have reached their, their useful life. And if you want to call it, uh, 
um, those trees were all removed as well as the decorative bricks. And we basically uh, went along with some asphalt and, and uh, filled in the area that where we removed bricks, we filled those back with asphalt to make it safer in the downtown. We had a whole number of older people, uh, residents that had fallen downtown and uh, we wanted to make that better, which we did. It's not perfect at this particular point, but certainly has resolved some of the issues that we've had down there. Um, part of um, what uh, was talked about at council at the time when the lights went up and the trees and the, and the bricks were removed was that uh, council would like to see some outdoor planters downtown um, to replace the trees that were removed. So we have been working with the Horticultural Society over the last three weeks here to uh, um, pick a planter that uh, that is nice looking, that can be used uh, throughout the summer and spring and, and fall periods, but can be taken back in for the winter. Um, and we have agreed on the type of planter and such, and we're going to be ordering those shortly. And I will be bringing a report to council on the 23rd of March, which outlines the locations of each of those particular areas. There's a whole lot of ideas with regards to what goes in those planters, everything from annual, annuals to perennials to um, you know, tree programs, that type of stuff. And we'll learn that stuff out moving forward. But we have been working closely with the Hort Society to, uh, um, to gather their expertise to make sure that this works downtown. Um, the other thing that we're gonna do is we're not gonna go full board downtown. We're, we are going to um, you know, take the program and, and walk slowly here with it so that we make sure that we uh, have, have a success with it. And then we can expand on that stuff moving forward. So um, the other thing that we did is that we, uh, you know, we've, we've had problems with weeds. So, I mean, typically in, in the past, in this municipality, those particular areas, whether it was downtown Wardsville or Melbourne or here or in Appen, where weeds were growing through sidewalks and that type of stuff, they had sprayed those weeds in the past with Roundup. And they really weren't supposed to be doing that. And that was basically against the provincial rules, against provincial law, against the legislation that's in place uh, for spraying. And they were doing that type of thing. So, um, you know, we also had a whole slew of volunteers in the community before COVID that, that, helped, that helped make the communities look better and beautified these communities. And, and it was difficult through COVID. Uh, the, it just didn't happen at the same level. And, um, it just became uh, difficult for people to volunteer when, you know, the government was say, telling everybody to stay home. So, um, so we have mechanically uh, purchased some stuff that will help us um, maintain some of the weeds and not just in the downtowns, but also in, uh, you know, especially here in Glencoe, we have concrete instead of asphalt, we've got cracks and weeds come up there. So we have purchased a new broom sweeper for our trackless machine. And that will help us. Uh, well, you'll certainly find the downtowns are swept a lot more than they were in the past. And we're hoping to keep those weeds down, um, you know, in those particular areas as well. So um, we also have uh, an extra staff person on this year that will help us um, with the removal of weeds, et cetera. But um, that's why I was very happy to see that, uh, you know, the group in Wardsville and Denise uh, has mobilized these people to beautify their community we'd like to see more of that we would like to see more weed Wednesdays where people show up and pick weeds and uh, as part of the community and uh, and then we can all work together to make uh, make things look a lot a lot nicer than than uh, what it was in the past so this is very fluid and ongoing with the downtowns and we you know what we want to do is uh, make it nicer and, and not have any complaints if we can get to that point um, you know that's our goal I will throw in quickly just that the parkette is under review as well. That particular area is going to be redesigned. And I am looking in the community and communicating with people in the community right now to, to try to put together a plan. And, you know, we've had some huge issues with the decorative bricks at the cenotaph. And I did include in the sidewalk uh, budget uh, in the sidewalk tender to have those bricks replaced with the, uh, with uh, concrete over there. So that's just another area of the, problem we have is that the under base is in, in terrible shape there's old tree stumps everything else and these bricks just keep dropping on us so you know we either we either take it all out rebuild the base completely and put it all back in again which may solve the problem it may not uh, because you're dealing with a lot of sand and you're dealing with a fair bit of storm water um, issues underneath those particular bricks 
So when we exposed it, it is not a good thing because you have old tree stumps and you've got a fair bit of water underneath there uh, with some cut tile, et cetera. And I'm not sure what happened when they did the original installation. So um, well, there's all that stuff with the downtown that's happening. And those particular areas were part of that sidewalk tender that just came back in. Um, so I will be bringing something back to council on the park cat as we move forward, as well as, um, you know, um, looking at that cenotaph as well. Um, so there's that. And the only thing I will throw in is just quickly is that the decking at the train station is going out to tender shortly. This is not a, a simple project like everybody thought originally. This is a complete deck replacement, which includes all the um, steel based structure that's underneath this, which is all rotten. The whole thing is completely rotten. And um, I tried to get this done simply by replacing a couple different stringers, um, but I couldn't get a permit through the building department. So I had to get the, uh, I got a report done on what was required. And now we're in the process of all the engineer drawings are done for it. And we're gonna take it to market. We're going to try to utilize as much of the old decking as we possibly can, which I think would be about 95%. And um, you know, once that's done, then we'll, that'll get rid of the spongy stuff. But again, what we the problem we ran into there was, and this goes right down into the basement of the of the uh, train station where there's there's no mechanism to deal with storm water for that building. So everything that goes through the deck just runs down along the foundation and ends up in the basement, and that's why we've had all the issues with the moisture in the basement. Um, so we have a plan now in place for this to uh, get rid of that water that was contaminating the basement and get the deck replaced. And uh, council approved uh, the money for that. And we'll see what we get as far as uh, when it goes out to tender, what those numbers are. And uh, my goal is to get this done and so that they don't have to do it for, you know, 25 or 30 years. And that we, you know, we keep the actual historic look of that building. I, I, I want to keep the same decking uh, that we have in place because it's a yellow pine that they got from down in, down south. Um, and the uh, engineer is telling me that they have access to that same type of uh, wood for, for the deck. So if we can keep as much of the deck we, as we can, it will save us some money for that particular project. So there's probably other things that I missed, but generally that's kind of, you know, a little bit about the downtown, the facilities and rec master plan and sort of the aggressive approach that we have to, to you know, hurdle over a lot of these things that, uh, you know, just didn't get uh, done in the past. So. And I'll, for the group, I'll quickly throw in that the sidewalk tender came back yesterday. Um, and that particular tender included about 46% of our worst sidewalks in all of the municipality. So, and I will be bringing that to council on the 23rd. But my goal is, uh, you know, if we can, you know, uh, get council to approve those type of dollars moving forward in the future, we'll have our sidewalk issue resolved here in three years. So that's kind of what I have and it's certainly available for questions. Good, it, uh, it, uh, they're, they're projects that we've uh, been in anticipation for Greg for some time and we're certainly uh, pleased with uh, their going forward. Mark, uh, go ahead, Mark uh, McGill. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Mayhew. Through, through the mayor to, to Greg Storms. Um, I remember last year when we did the sidewalk tender, Rob Cole had spent a, a lot of time walking around the whole municipality determining which sidewalks needed to be replaced. But then we'd also, there was somebody through or some group through AMO that was gonna look at the sidewalks and determine which ones need to be replaced. Did that happen as well? And was there much, if it did, was there much difference between what Rob thought and what they thought? Yeah, and um, through you, Mayor Allen, I mean, yeah, so I mean, so if you look at the asset management program for the municipality, like every, every section of sidewalk we have is, is, in, is within that asset management plan. When asset, manage, asset management plans were first developed, they were developed based on the age of a, an asset. Um, so if you looked at sidewalks, you, you know, you had this mishmash of, you know, if one was older than the other one, but was in better shape than the other one. I mean, it was just all subjective as to who and what sidewalks got replaced. So uh, I jumped on a program with LAS, which was through AMO. Um, 
to basically do a condition assessment of every sidewalk that we had in the municipality. So that was done. They took a little machine and they drove all our sidewalks with the machine. And then they digested all that uh, information. And then they rated all the sections of sidewalk consistent with our asset management program. And they gave them condition ratings. So what we included in this year's sidewalk budget and why I know that it's about 46% of our sidewalk um, program is because we got condition assessments on all our sidewalks. So we've now taken the worst condition sidewalks we have and we've put that into our sidewalk tender. Further to your question, Mark, I would say 95% of the stuff that Rob looked at was now, it now is going to get replaced. Um, there, there may be a couple areas that are more strategic than others. And certainly some ones that, you know, if we look at something now that may have changed with just over the last, since I got the condition stuff done, certainly there would be areas uh, of those which we're currently looking at. Um, they may get added or they may not get added at this particular point. So um, the only thing I'm very confident about is that, you know, about 46% of what we have that's been listed now as, um, you know, issues with our sidewalks is going to get done within this year's within this year's tender. So, and if we continue to make the commitment, we'll get to the point where there will, there, you won't have to do sidewalk work until those conditions change from, you know, cause when you put in a new sidewalk, the condition goes to very good. So, and if the useful life is 25 years on that sidewalk, you will not see that come back up in your capital infrastructure plan until 23 years. It'll start noted. It'll start notifying you in two years that, you have to replace this much sidewalk. And these ones here are just based on, on the condition itself. So yeah, this is part of the asset management plan completely for the whole municipality. But in, in really what it's done is it's, it sent a camera out there and said, these are the sidewalks that you need to replace. Um, and I love Mark's cat. <laughs> just kind of photobombed him. Sorry about that. Yeah, no problem. So this is the idea behind, you know, not being subjective anymore, but like when you look at everything from a truck to a, a you know, a building to, you know, underground infrastructure, whether it's sanitary or it's water, you know, our goal right now is to move forward and get all this conditionally assessed. And then it's not going to be subjective. Your particular worst areas and where you need to replace infrastructure you will be notified and it will not just tell you, you know, that it needs to be replaced, but it also give you the costing associated with what are the replacement costs for those particular assets itself. So I, I, I know that, uh, you know, not too many people want to talk about asset management, but this is a, this is a huge part of, of municipalities and, you know, laying out enough money for the future so that you can cover your assets so that you can actually replace the amount of assets. So if I said to you that the plan is pushing out that we own $80 million worth of assets, that would mean the council has to put away a certain dollar figure over the useful life of that infrastructure to replace it. And then not to, um, you know, all of a sudden, well, I need a greater, so I need $750,000. Like we wanna get away from that so that the money is put away prior to that. So then when it's time to replace the infrastructure, that, uh, you know, the money's in the bank kind of thing. So, and Joe may want to jump in here too. <laughs> okay. Um, Mark, did you have a follow-up? I thought I saw your hand come, go up there. Well, yeah, yes. Thank you, Mayor Mayhew. If it's not, maybe it's too early for Greg to answer questions like this, but I know last year we only got one uh, tender on the sidewalks and it was a whole lot more than what we'd ever paid before for sidewalks. So we decided not to proceed. How was it this year? How many tenders did we get? And are they good ones? Yeah, so I, can, I can't give you too many specifics other than to tell you that there's five submissions and that we had a range, uh, you know, uh, one fell within the budget that was approved by council. The other four fell outside of that, uh, but not one, you know, the first two were pretty close to the budget that uh, council had approved. So. Um, you know, we had, uh, we had a linear meter cost associated with what we put on the market. And we were pretty close to that, just a touch higher the, the, uh, than what we thought. But, you know, not too bad. So 
I will be bringing that report to council on the 23rd. Good, thank you, uh, Greg. Uh, Jill, uh, is out of courtesy, is there anything you'd like to add to that? Yeah, I, I wanted to just note that the asset management plan is actually a, a huge, um, should be of huge interest to an economic development committee um, because the, the main um, way that a municipality can really stimulate economic development is by having the appropriate infrastructure in place. So having a plan that um, acknowledges and really works towards making sure that the appropriate infrastructure is there um, and it aligns with the strategy of growth is really going to support any other kind of private development. So it's very tightly linked to an economic development strategy to ensure that you know what it is that we already have can be replaced and how we wanna grow in the future is going to support um, that private investment. So I think, we're ahead of the game um, compared to most of our neighboring municipalities in terms of the asset management plan, um, the condition assessments that we've received that replace a lot of that age-based uh, historical approach, uh, approach to the plan. And we continue to be updating that information. And I think it's um, just a huge kudos to uh, council for supporting that effort and initiative and investment in it and the senior management team for really continuing to ensure that this is um, something that's a living document that we are supporting. Um, and it, it's something that the economic development is important to. It's also important to the development review coordinator position that council just approved and we've just hired for um, as well, because that's going to help with the assumption of infrastructure for developments so that um, that that information gets inputted into that uh, plan and the financial strategy moving forward. So um, really, really vitally important, actually. Um, so well, maybe th there's nobody who loves it quite as much as myself and Greg and Kristen, but <laughs> it's um, it's really important. So I just wanted to say thanks to both council and to the senior management team for continuing to move that along. Thank you, Jill. Uh, I, I might inform the committee also that uh, provincial funding uh, will be um, uh, very much conditional upon uh, having a submission of uh, an asset management uh, review of our assets. Uh, the government are willing to give us money to uh, bring our assets up to standard, but they want facts and figures and uh, they want a history behind it. So uh, if, we're if we are to continue to receive uh, adequate funding from the province, uh, the asset management plan is crucial. So uh, that was another reason why it was so important to get it. And Greg, thank you. Uh, uh, are there questions uh, in regard to the downtown or sidewalks? Uh, yes, uh, Councillor Barlett, go ahead. Uh, thank you uh, through you, uh, Mayor Allen, to uh, Greg. The uh, the flower baskets downtown, you mentioned there was uh, going to be some changes this year and new signage. Do you still expect that to be uh, revenue neutral? Yes, and um, through you, uh, Mayor Allen, to Doug, yes, because um, that was included in the fee. Um, that was included in the fee, fees uh, stuff that was just passed. And we actually can work that in to the, you know, the fee that people pay us for those particular baskets. So yeah, it's still revenue neutral. And I think we have close to 70 people that have already participated in the basket program for this uh, spring. So um, it's good numbers. When I first arrived, we had 140 baskets up and those, what happens is that, you know, if, if the, if we're the municipality is just putting up baskets, um, it really degenerated the interest in the program so that, you know, we kept seeing those numbers fall right off. So if we had 80 people that were involved one year and then we put up 140 baskets, we saw those numbers really reduce. So what we've got now is we've got really uh, an active community that has uh, is participating in that particular program. We just felt that they needed better signs, you know, signs that you could actually see and recognize the people that they want to recognize as part of their donation. So, you know, this is, uh, was a good thing. And I, I commend the, that, that facilities and rec team because they, um, you know, this is part of their plan to, you know, have better signs and to recognize the, the donors. So, and right now it's difficult to, to see some of those and uh, unless you're right below them, you can't really see them. So, 
Yeah, and um, there's always been a, a good interest from the residents of Southwest Middlesex to participate in that program. I think that is really kind of, you know, came from Communities in Bloom and, and their activeness, uh, you know, during times uh, in the past, so. Good. Uh, Greg, uh, Thanks, are Greg. you still taking, uh, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Doug. Uh, Gregor, uh, is, is it cut off for this year, the, uh, uh, the sponsorship of baskets, or is it still open? No, it's still open. So if anybody's yeah. interested, they certainly can get a hold of Melissa at the uh, township office. Okay, sounds good. Uh, any further questions? Yes, uh, Mike, go ahead, please. Thank you, Mayor Mayhew. Uh, I remember, recall that we had an earlier discussion about the new street lights not being as bright as the older ones. And there was thought that maybe they could be adjusted to become brighter. And I just wondered if we were able, if we were successful at that. Yeah, go ahead, Greg. Well, yeah, through you, Mary Ellen. I mean, if I get a complaint with regards to, you know, the brightness of lights, we can certainly turn them up. Um, you know, I, that's the first I've really kind of heard that. I don't. Certainly there were questions with regards to the engineering before they went up, which we answered um, and certainly provided the engineering um, to the people that asked because they were concerned about that coverage. But since the lights have been up, I am certainly working with Gerber on a regular basis uh, because he's in town um, and there haven't been, I haven't got one complaint with regard to the light coverage itself, but if that occurs, then we certainly can turn them up. We have to be careful though, because the more you turn up lights, uh, you may uh, disturb somebody else. So we may have to turn them down. So it's kind of a fine line, but uh, what we purchased were lights that there were adjustable and, and we can in certain cases turn them up and you know right next to the next one, turn them down. But um, if there are any complaints that come in, certainly send them my way. And uh, between myself and Mr. Gerber, we'll certainly uh, deal with it, so. Good, thank you. Yep. Uh, committee, any further uh, questions to Greg? Yep, and the banner program is going on, on as it has in the past historically, Greg, uh, not too many changes there. Uh, it's, uh, I know we uh, put up uh, probably three different types of banners a year, year and uh, we have our war memorial banners, we have our Canada Day banners, and we have our live, work and play banners. So uh, that keeps us busy on that end of it too. So, and, and, and you know, the only thing I was, I'm just thinking of things as we go. We're also moving forward with new flagpoles. So this is something that, you know, council approved some money in the budget this year to replace flagpoles. Um, so we will be going out the, the municipal office here first and then the cenotaph in Glencoe, as well as the cenotaph in Wardsville. Um, you know, simply because we need poles up there that you can actually send one person to, to raise a flag or to lower a flag or to lower a flag to half mass. Right now we have to get bucket trucks and and big tall ladders to get up to these poles and it's not very safe. So council did approve that money in the budget this year moving forward and we're working on that right now, so. Okay, that sounds good. This will, this will mean less complaints uh, for all members of council and uh, <laughs> the hierarchy when this all comes in and uh, people uh, do not like to see a tattered flag, I can assure you. Anyway, and uh, we can't blame them. We're proud of our country and we want it to, to uh, be merchandised well. Uh, Greg, thank you very much for that. Uh, Council, that was uh, a lot of ground covered there. Uh, any questions uh, you'd like to bring? Uh, I don't want to miss anyone. Rick, Dennis, uh, anyone? Any questions? You're okay? All right. Krista, here, fine. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, Greg, thank you once again uh, for that. Uh, it was a good update. And uh, we uh, look forward to that work uh, starting to commence uh, over the course of the next several weeks, it may begin, eh? Okay, we're on number five of the uh, agenda. We're in the consent portion of the, uh, the agenda. There are uh, uh, a couple of items here. The Economic Development um, Committee meeting minutes of December 9th uh, require uh, uh, approval. And uh, there's Ontario housing uh, information documents uh, regarding housing affordability and uh, uh, other uh, AMO uh, initiatives there. Uh, is there any uh, questions and failing which uh, I'll have uh, entertain a motion to uh, receive the uh, consent agenda as presented or 
if the committee wishes to discuss any of those, just pull it out and we will discuss it. Failing which, uh, I'll take a motion to receive that information uh, that we received. Thank you. Uh, Councillor McGill, a seconder for that, please. De uh, Dennis, thank you very much. Any questions? Yes, Mark, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Mayhew. Um, will that Ontario housing, will those Ontario housing information documents be attached to maybe our next council meeting? Because there's a lot of really good information in there that all councillors should see. Yeah, and uh, we certainly can uh, uh, instruct Jill to do that. And I'm sure that uh, it will be in there uh, nonetheless, but uh, she'll make note of that, Mark, and uh, we'll make sure that it's in there. I'll call the question. All in favor of the consent agenda? Carried. And uh, committee, if I could just back up, and uh, Greg put a lot of work in that report. I would like that uh, on our minutes that uh, we receive uh, the operations manager's uh, report for information. Uh, may I have a mover for that, Krista? And a seconder, uh, Rick. And uh, uh, out of courtesy, I'll call one, one call for questions that uh, Greg's report be received for information. All in favor? Thank you. And we have a little better paper trail with that committee. Uh, Sheila, you're up next uh, and you have uh, some ground to cover here as well. So uh, please uh, take the floor. Hey, maybe I'll have Kendra or Jill share my report on the screen if, if they want to. Um, okay. It's not mandatory, but no, again, um, so if that's uh, convenient for Jill to do or, or Kendra. It was really great having uh, Greg in to speak about what's happening in our neighborhoods over the summer and spring. Uh, lots of exciting things going on to imp improve our visual appearance. So I'm not going to spend a huge amount of time on, on my report. Um, I think we can say that as far as progress, which is on the second slide, uh, we've made some very huge strides in uh, economic development over the last 18 months. And we've got a really great team working together between council committee and all of our staff. We, um, we've moved to having regular staff meetings where we kind of coordinate all the things that tie in together. So that's been really helpful and works very well for everybody. On the third slide, this is my happiest news to report that we've had growth of 3% in this last term, which was absolutely not expected. But I think through that teamwork and cooperation, we've been able to bring in enough housing development and, uh, and we've, get, in a way, you can look at it as a 5.2% increase based on the fact that we were anticipated decline by 2.2 as of the 2019 report on for our economic development strategy. So that's excellent news. Private dwelling, dwellings have increased by 2.3%, also great news. And uh, something to note um, is that that 2.2% that they expected to de decline in this term was actually a very optimistic number and could have very well been lower much bigger decline than what we had, what we were predicted to have. So 3% is excellent. And it is in line with the county and other area communities. Um, not, not right exactly, but many are growing. Locally, the only one that there was a decline over the last um, Stats Canada for your term was Newberry with a very slight decline. Um, so part of that, um, 3% growth. We seem to be seeing that the ages are changing a bit. Uh, we've got a lot of younger adults coming in that are keeping, helps keep the momentum in the community. So that's, that's all good news. And next slide. So we've been very working very hard at the top five strategic priorities as a team. And of course, this is from our report. And of course we've, number one, we did get the staff in place right away. Uh, number two, which deals with um, 
developing a program for being investment ready. That came on very quickly. We had to kind of pivot to make that a more cohesive program. So we now have a pretty good process with it. And as far as number three, uh, marketing the site, interest continues to be strong and we continue to market the lands and develop materials to sell the lands. And we are fairly optimistic that within the next while we should have about 50% of the lands sold. So that, that's really great news. Um, and number four, we're constantly working on communications and if we're doing a newsletter every quarter, once one ends, we're automatically working on the next one. And we definitely welcome suggestions from the committee for this document. Anything that you're hearing out in the community that needs clarification. And uh, we just want to make sure that our people are appropriately informed and um, know who to go to and, and what to expect, what's coming up. So we really want to make that a very prominent um, item in our communication strategy. On number five of the top five, we've got some work that has been done on that. Once we have the branding in place, then we expect that we can move more forward more easily on that aspect so that it's, it's, um, it's good to have the visuals in place to incorporate into the actual process and that way you save money that way you're not kind of back and forth with those kinds of things. If we go to the next slide, complete to date and ongoing activities. I'm not going to spend a lot of time, you've got the list, but we have really achieved a lot of things over the last 18 months and there is still always lots to do and lots of forward momentum and uh, this has really moved us forward as a, a growing community. Next slide. So there's lots of uh, development going on. I've referred to the uh, Adobe subdivision as that, but it's actually named Lachlan Glen, at least a portion of it is. And uh, so Everything's kind of moving forward. We see some shovels in the ground and it's all good. Um, so there is lots of development underway. And last evening at council, the CIP program applications were brought to council for their consideration. Four out of five applications for this year were approved. There was one application that's on hold as we're waiting for some additional information from them. The last two years have been very difficult for applicants in um, obtaining quotes in particular. With COVID and the stress on that building community, it's really difficult for people to get quotes on, especially the smaller jobs, such as um, say a little step repair or a facade improvement. And of course the prices are quite high. so. I've been working quite closely with all of them. Um, in the future, I'd like to see them consult more with me so that they can have a better application coming forward. That seems to be a piece that's missing a bit in the process. I tend to talk to, this year may, might have talked to two out of the five and you still have to work with them quite a bit. And then, the other three were handing in their applications on the last day and I had to work very quickly with them to turn it all around to get the right information in place, get the right number of quotes. So that's a very key piece to it. Um, so we do have documents that like a brochure that can go to all the homeowners and I'm hoping or not homeowners, business owners. And, uh, I am hoping in the near future as things improve with COVID to do a little, uh, a little road show in Wardsville in particular and possibly at one, some point Melbourne where I can take the brochure around and talk to people and let them know that I'm here for them and that they can talk to me anytime and we can get applications together well before the application period. Another great thing that happened last night for as a pilot project, we're going to extend the opportunity for 
business owners to apply for the full year for signage improvement grants. And we will have the money this year to do that. So it will be there as long as we have that money. And as long as the applications are coming in, that's all great. And I think that's everything with the CIP. Oh no, um, the biggest thing with our CIP this year that I should, would love to share with everybody is that the CIP has really helped to fill two empty storefronts, which is absolutely key in this community. And uh, I'm just so happy that that happened. So we can look forward to two new businesses on our main street in Glencoe. Hopefully next year we can say something for Wardsville as well, maybe Melbourne. So good work on that. Thank you for approving that for the community. They're, I'm sure they're quite happy with that opportunity to have that. Um, and two, um, just so you have a little background, if you didn't see the council meeting, the um, value of investments that businesses will be putting into their main street projects are just over 100,000 for this year. And the contribution that we will be putting into those projects is about $12,000. Once we, we may have a few more. So I expect we could be around the 15 to $16,000 this year to support our businesses. And next slide. So these are strengths that I pulled from the McSweeney report from December, 2019. So this, these are the ways that we've been utilizing our strengths. So we've got the branding underway and we've got a mix of businesses that have definitely been a strength that's helped to show our resistance. When we do a package for a prospective business, if it's a large business, they quite often ask what has, how many businesses have declined in, or lost, who, who have gone out of business basically. And um, we have been able to say that within our community, we might have one closure at this point, and it's been long-term coming. Um, I think everybody knows that Tender Tootsies no longer has their retail uh, site, and that has kind of moved into something else. I think there's storage in another business is, is in there. We are, Kara and I are going to be visiting them at some point and talking with them about what's happening there and what could happen there. Um, so yeah, we've had a great resilience in our community with businesses where some have thought about closing, um, others in the community have come in and helped them out to run their business rather than see it closed, which is a great thing as well. We're seeing some great partnerships as well. And those seem to be happening, um, between the businesses themselves. We've done a little bit of pushing in that direction, very, very mildly, but it seems to be happening. So certified site information brochure highlights our strengths. So in there, we talk about um, cost of living out here, our hospitals, our rail service, um, you name it. We've, we do all that, our schools, different things like that. So all of that goes into our marketing packages. And, uh, our growing population is being welcomed with uh, new programs and opportunities through um, focus studies. So we've got the Recreation Master Plan, which is bringing a lot of new opportunities for these younger people to take advantage of, which is absolutely fantastic. And uh, again, that's, that's how we're using our strengths to, um, to market our community. And we'll keep continuing to build that and to express that into, out into the public. Next slide. So this is an, a snapshot of our aspirations that came out of our sessions. And we have, um, as everyone knows, we've done a lot of studies. They've been undertaken to guide forward movement for the community. And that includes the asset management plan, which is just so valuable to us moving forward and uh, working with various individuals and organizations to develop new affordable housing opportunities. We've had some pretty unique proposals come our way. We're even talking to some groups about the uh, Brownfield site. So hopefully that will come to fruition. There's never any guarantees, but that is something that we're working on right now. Uh, 
very fortunate to have so the installation of newer in internet technologies and allowing for kids to learn at home during this time frame and to for their parents to work from home. And with that ability, that can really bring in a lot of people to have when they have that ability to work from home, then you're going to get a lot of younger clientele um, that are coming in and uh, just making a new life here, a little quieter life and, and just a little less costly. And uh, once we get through COVID, which is looking like it's very soon, we'll have more opportunity to engage with more businesses and take on more tourism opportunities. So I think that's it for that slide. And this is a little bit of a shift. So we've had two new member requests and Jill may want to kind of pop in on this one with regard to the terms of reference, but we've received requests from Seng Jackson, who's the owner and operator of Redberry Gardens, two locations. Uh, Mel Moniz, uh, he's a citizen and a Lions Club member, and I'm sure he does much more, but I don't have any other information on him. They have both, both requested to join the committee. There is room within the terms of reference as they sit at present to be a part of that committee. And we, would like your input on that. So if anybody wants to talk about that right now, we can. Maybe uh, if I could jump in just a little bit, Sheila. Yes. Okay, The um, I guess the other, maybe I'll stop sharing my screen just briefly. Yep. Um, so I have asked um, for a report back to council about both the economic development and the recreation committee, but even with the economic development, it was reviewed this term of council with the direction for it to be reviewed once again um, at the end of the term. So it, it's really slated for review. Part of the conversation was, um, if I could summarize just generally, there's a significant number of uh, members of council on the economic development committee um, then I think the idea and hope was to have increased representation from the business community. Um, so I've asked both Greg and Sheila to work on those reports uh, so that council has them in front of them prior to uh, the next term of council when we normally have appointments at the very beginning of the, of the term. Um, so again, I think what Sheila has brought forward, and I understand Seng was, is she's in the meeting right now, I, and Krista Cowell invited her so, um, to the meeting. The idea was just um, get some feedback here to help Sheila in preparing that report, um, as well as, you know, are you looking as a committee to have increased membership right now? Um, what kind of a feedback and input would you like um, to provide to council moving forward um, for that report? You're on mute, Alan. We never seem to uh, grasp that, do we? Uh, We'll have to become engaged in conversation here, committee, uh, in order to uh, uh, bring this forward. Uh, both those candidates, uh, as I'm sure you know them uh, well, uh, it should be mentioned with Mel Monez that Mel uh, is instrumental in the Sundays at the station uh, with his musical background and his connections in the music industry. Uh, that has become a, a, a very uh, a great program uh, during the summer months uh, in Glencoe on Sunday early Sunday evenings, and uh, it uh, brings people in from actually the whole four counties region. So uh, Mel uh, has earned his stripes uh, there as well. And uh, in addition, Sang is, uh, ex we're very pleased to have her downtown. And uh, uh, she's been a beneficiary of the CIP program, as you all know, as well. So uh, I'll open it up for a discussion. Uh, we, uh, uh, and Sheila, I want to uh, commend you for that uh, report on economic development. Uh, committee, uh, very often uh, uh, opening up a new position 
uh, is very, very often scrutinized as to the cost, but I think you have to weigh the cost with the benefit received. And uh, we, uh, for what we are, uh, this is a part-time position, the economic development uh, officer, and uh, we certainly uh, are uh, reaping uh, uh, additional investment in Southwest Middlesex as a result of this. And uh, I know that uh, some of these uh, programs look glencocentric at present, but there has been a new business in Melbourne that just recently uh, has become engaged in the Melbourne business community on the Southwest Middlesex side of the fence. And uh, I still uh, believe there's good things that can happen in Wardsville as well. So we'll look forward to that uh, over the summer months as well. Uh, to focus the conversation, uh, is there any input on these two new members or would someone put forth a recommendation that we uh, recommend to council uh, that these two me members, these two names be engaged? Michael, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor Mayhew. I think they'd both be excellent additions and I would like to make that recommendation to go before council. Yeah, I think so too. And uh, uh, I think it's a very important uh, too, uh, getting that uh, uh, private sector uh, engagement in here, not, not just council members. Is there a seconder for Michael's motion there? Yes, Dennis, I see your hand there. Any discussion? We're recommending these two names to council. Yes, uh, Krista, go ahead. Um, I think too, part of the conversation needs to be looking at our terms of reference. Uh, I think that that is something that we're having come back to us as well as a report that takes a look at what is our composition going to look like? And I believe my understanding is that we won't change the way our economic development committee sits right now, but it is saying that going forward with the new term of council, based on the experience we've seen here, perhaps we don't need as many people, perhaps we don't need as large of a group. Um, maybe we focus it more on some of the businesses. And I think that's part of the discussion we need to be having. Do we feel that way? Do we like the group of folks that we have? And keeping in mind that they may not return and apply, um, we're doing the same thing with the rec committee, taking a look at whether our terms are four years or two years and really looking at what we want this composition to have and thinking about as well what we've accomplished because when we first sat at this table, we didn't even have a terms of reference. We came up with our own terms of reference. Um, do we wanna take a look at how these terms might change next time? Um, I'm excited to see the growth and interest in both of these types of committees, especially within the business uh, sector for economic development. Initially, Mr. Model was one of our first and only really, really active uh, members of the business sector joining this committee. Um, and I think that we need to have more of their voices when we're thinking about how we can support the businesses in our community and how we can grow them. Okay. Very well, then we'll, uh, we certainly must uh, uh, do that. We may need the assistance of sa staff uh, in terms of bringing forth recommendations as well and with the, uh, the committee engagement in it uh, in addition to that. It's, uh, it's also nice that uh, um, some of these uh, members, uh, one of the proposed uh, members is a, a member of the Lions Club as well. So it's, it's good to have that representation in it. Uh, uh, two, uh, we have two uh, lines members with us now, and uh, they're an important entity in our community. And uh, um, both those names are, are very well-rounded in terms of their uh, participation in our communities. There is a mover and a seconder uh, that the uh, two names be recommended uh, to join this uh, meeting. And those terms of reference will come, come back to this table uh, at... Uh, the next meeting, perhaps we can have something, uh, some uh, formal discussions on that and bring your ideas forth. Um, and we certainly will have uh, some input from staff on that, uh, I hope. Uh, we can entertain a motion uh, following this. This uh, is off the table, this one that we currently have on here. But uh, are, there, are there any questions regarding the appointment of Sang and Mel uh, to this committee? It's going to council as a recommendation only. Any questions? I'll call the question then that uh, council be recommended uh, to consider the names of Mel Monez and Sang on the committee. Please raise your hand if you're in favor. Carried, all opposed? Seeing none. 
And uh, Jill, uh, in terms of reference on this, uh, how would you like us to approach this? Oh, for the term, terms of reference? Well, yes. I think, uh, as you noted, it would be useful to think about to think about it and then um, reach out to staff, have some discussions and, um, and provide your, your feedback and input to us on what's working, what's not working. I think there has been a lot of success that um, has happened as a result of uh, following the, the uh, strategy that was adopted by Council for Economic Development. Uh, Sheila's she's not quite done her presentation, but she's okay. touched on a, a lot of things there. Um, uh, and I, I think it's about how do we continue to move that forward and what are some of the next steps and what's the, the best place for a group such as this to help make that happen. Okay. Well, Sheila, you're not, not being done, Sheila. We'll let you continue on and uh, perhaps uh, uh, thereafter uh, we, we will uh, uh, await. Uh, perhaps staff can uh, bring us some ideas forth uh, on the agenda at the next meeting. And in the meantime, uh, each of us can uh, perhaps uh, convey some of our opinions uh, to staff or to the chair, and I'll make sure that they're passed on. And uh, we'll uh, uh, certainly uh, try to improve efficiencies and effectiveness uh, in uh, changing those terms of reference. Sheila, would you like to continue? Sure, and I'm happy to receive those comments so that I can put together the report for Jill. Okay. Um, so if anybody wants to either give me a call or email me, that's, that's great. Um, if you want to take the time, I can send out the terms of reference to everyone after the meeting and you can take a look at them and sort of make comments on what exists currently. That would, that would be wonderful if you could do that. Mm -hmm. So the next part is a lot of discussion items that we can have um, just to get some feelings about things and moving forward. So first thing that, I'd like to discuss is CIP awards. Part of our CIP was to award to a top um, a top applicant in the program was to offer an award to them of some sort. And for 2021, I have recommended to council um, through the year end report that we recognize all of the applicants in the first year because they all jumped right on it in August and they knew they had a very short turnaround time and they really got the ball rolling and I think they all need the rec recognition for that. So in future years, I do believe that we should take it down to one outstanding um, applicant that finishes the work as, as written. And uh, so I am looking for the committee's ideas on how to recognize those participants. There's many ways we could do it, whether you want to have a physical award for them, like say a plexiglass plaque that they display in their business, or it could be a matter of a local gift certificate. It could be absolutely anything and definitely open to ideas, values, um, thoughts, anything at this point. I think you're a good group to to make those decisions for us and hopefully the Minister of Energy who is running around barking right now is <laughs> will be quiet for a few minutes for us but um, if, if we can just open it up to discussion that would be great. Good no I think that's a good idea. Uh, Rick uh, go ahead I see your hand up. Yes you did. Um, to compare it to the community in bloom awards that uh, People went around and picked uh, that kind of stuff. I think that really, really worked for that. And I think that it could for the very same thing here. It would give us credit for the fact that we're supporting the businesses and would also give the businesses the support that they're trying very hard to make their place better. So basically, like we, we were giving um, predominantly every top entry was getting a certificate is that kind of where you're thinking or well they were getting they were, we were putting a plaque in, in their garden and stuff like that we could put a plaque in the front window so that everybody realizes that this wasn't something that they just did on their own that um that there is a plan in place and these people um they took advantage of it but they took advantage of it because we made it available 
so that, you know, we, I mean, it's the same as I think is that some of that stuff for communities in bloom, Sheila, there was stuff that was given to us and we made sure it got out to the people that wanted to use it, like the fertilizer and that stuff. The same kind of idea, I think. Give them credit where credit's due and make sure that people realize that it's part of a group effort. Yep. Thank you, Rick, for those comments. Uh, Sheila, you can grasp that. Yes. Okay. Uh, I think that's good. Uh, in terms of comparison, a gift certificate to some type of parchment or uh, uh, tangible uh, remembrance for their participation, I think uh, uh, I agree with Rick that uh, I like to see something uh, in, a, in an award format, whether it's a frame certificate or whether it's a piece of glass, because I, you know, I speak from experience, even after you retire from the business community, you still have those and, and you still cherish them. They're on your bookcases and things like that. Uh, so uh, whereas a gift certificate is gone and, and sometimes forgotten about in the future, but uh, uh, they're with the they're with you for the rest of your life and I think that's uh, that's uh, important I know uh, the better business bureau things like that when they uh, recognize a business uh, it's generally in the format of some type of uh, uh, parchment and as Rick says when that's displayed in the window uh, people walk by and know that it's uh, uh, it's, it's an honor bestowed on them and uh, and also that uh, it didn't happen by accident that the uh, the governance of the municipality uh, had a, a hand in that. So uh, I think that would be uh, good. Yes, Amy, go ahead. What about um, like one of the flower baskets? I know Greg mentioned um, the different business names. There's new plaques that are going up with that. Maybe we could award one of those baskets with that name and maybe a CIP or something on the other side of it. Um, to represent that award. That's a, uh, we can certainly run that by uh, through uh, uh, recreation and uh, they can uh, take that idea. And, and uh, uh, we have to look at cost, of course, as we do in every decision. And would this be a one-time thing or a perpetual thing, Amy? What are you suggesting? I was thinking the one-time thing. Since the CIP, I think it closes the February 21st or something like that that gives enough time to prepare the plaque mm -hmm. certainly uh, all right uh, yep uh, Sheila uh, comment regarding regarding that um, so so with that what we would be recognizing is the year prior so that would be figured out in January which gives lots of time to prepare a plaque for the next year's um, visual on who, who got the CIP award. So it will always have a lag. So you wouldn't, you wanna see a project completed and done within what they've said they would do before you recognize them with an award. That's, that's a key thing. I think that's a great idea to do the, the flower basket, but it would just be for the, so it would be like for this year, it would be the, the one group business with three that participated together could have a flower basket as well as uh, elite egg. So that, that would be two baskets that we would award just because of that first year. That would be in 2022. So in 2023, you would see whoever the award winner was from 22. Okay. Is that, does that make sense? Yep, I see <laughs> Hope that. It does. Mm -hmm. I like the idea. Yep, okay. Um... That would, uh, Jill, that would have to go uh, uh, come as a recommendation to council, uh, correct? And uh, if, uh, Amy, if you feel uh, strongly about that, uh, it's your prerogative to make that a motion. I can try to get you a seconder on that if you wish. Well, I think uh, Mr. Motto had his hand okay. up. Okay, Phil, I missed you there. I, I see you from the neck up, Phil. That's all I can see. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> there you go. Okay, yeah, go ahead, Phil. How are you? All right, uh, Mr. Mayor, thank you very much. I guess from a, uh, a business for, oh, business owner's perspective, I, I'd be not looking for financial benefit because I've already received it through the CIP grant if it was if I indeed had applied for it. Uh, so for me, it would be looking for uh, promoting the program uh, for the greater benefit of the community so other businesses would see what a impact is having on the community and how it could impact uh, their business and, and the community as well. So, so the, the win-win 
uh, opportunity there by showing to other property and business owners that, um, hey, this is something that uh, is benef benefiting both of us. So for me, it would just be about profile and recognition of the program and, and a little bit of profile about uh, my business as well. So th that's my two cents, not having participated in it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other comment? Yes, uh, Krista, go ahead. Um, thank you. Uh, kind of uh, what Phil said, building on it, looking at a profile, and it might take some legwork um, moving forward if it's becoming something we do, but going out and taking before pictures, I'm sure many of the businesses do that, but I never take a before picture before I decide to do a crafty sort of renovation. I always forget that part. Um, and then doing a after picture and then whoever ends up accomplishing the project on budget in the time frame and be, ends up being our winner, we would do a profile on them and we would say, this is the work they got done. This is, you know, the grant money they received. This is how they, what type of grant money they received and sort of just talk up our project a little bit uh, and do it as a, a profile of this business in our community and the fact that they're engaging in our community and the programs we offer just kind of building a little bit on what Phil said is, and I mean, it takes a little bit of legwork for us because we are the ones documenting it um, potentially, but it provides a little bit more. We could do like a two day session or leading up before the next um, window opens. So for example, in February, we opened up our grants. We make a point of um, promoting these businesses potentially in January to remind different businesses that this is the type of, opportunities that's coming to you shortly and get your uh, grants ready. Yep. No, that's a good point. Uh, it's self-promoting and may foster more participation. Uh, Sheila, back to you. So that, that is a part of the program where we do have to have before and after pictures. And this year we use those pictures in our first quarterly newsletter to promote. And uh, I think we can do more with that as well. So that's also, all these are great ideas. Okay. Well, perhaps that's what we're looking for uh, today. And um, uh, she, uh, Sheila, you can uh, bring this back uh, to the table uh, in future discussion if you want to document some of those comments that are made and uh, uh, they can have uh, further consideration. Uh, what's the committee's pleasure? Uh, is this a, a, a fluid conversation or do you want to bring it to closure here? Or uh, we have uh, more ideas forthcoming. Sheila, what do you think? Well, I lost, lost um, my screen here. We should probably run this by, um, especially with the flower basket, we'll need to run that by um, Greg Storms first. Yes. That's, that's mm -hmm. his program. Um, the other things I think uh, we can bring to a future meeting, uh, such All as right. the placard for windows. I think that's a good idea as well. And good good for your current application so anybody who's doing some work would have that in their window currently and we can put some wording on there that would encourage people to start their looking at their applications early in the year so um yeah this is a good good step forward on these and we can talk about it again at the next meeting yes that'll be fine and i think going back to greg's uh report uh one uh uh, phrase that resonated with me in the flower basket program was the word self-sustaining. So we have to be careful there that uh, we do uh, need that to be kind of a self-sustaining program, if, if at all possible, because the municipality uh, spends a considerable amount of money in maintenance of that program, I think to the tune of almost 10,000 a year in uh, wages to water those, those baskets. Anyway, thank you. Well, we'll uh, we'll come and revisit that. Uh, Sheila, I don't want to cut you off there. Uh, is there anything uh, else that uh, you have yet to cover? No, nope. CIP closed for now. If there's any other ideas, please send them along to me by email or just give me a call. That would be great. Okay. Um, and uh, <clears throat> committee, before, before we go, uh, if there's any questions to Sheila, I certainly want to give you the courtesy of asking to her directly on this program. Any others? Okay, I think we can move on. Uh, branding. Well, okay, Brand it. Branding, it's been an absolutely amazing process. It's been uh, really great to listen to the very various perspectives that have come out of it. 
Um, the outside business operators that we have included in the process were chosen not only for um, their locations, but also the interaction that they have with the community. So we tried to pick people that were quite involved in the community and that see a broad cross section of, of the people within the community. We had a few others that we tried to engage and they were not able to uh, take part, which is unfortunate, but uh, again, really, really interesting process. And it, it's been very nice to see that our community is um, seeing Southwest in a more progressive light with still with a great appreciation of our natural as aspects. Like it's just been really nice to hear the positive things that have come through this and the attributes that we kind of forget about that we have. So um, at one point I was hoping to have a contest for feedback, but I think that with the um, Mad Hatter has kind of gone a little bit different direction with the group. They've wanted to engage more with the group. We talked about it originally to make sure that this went out to the public, um, but um, they wanted to focus because there was so much interest in the branding and the comments that came through it. They really wanted to focus on the people that, um, that we had and they drew, um, drew more sessions with those individuals. And so they want to close up with the branding come the end of March, early April. And I don't know if there's anything else that we could do as far as a public contest for, maybe we could do something where we um, provide maybe a gift certificate for people who see the logo somewhere. Um, I don't know, there's so many things that we could do, but we'll open to ideas of ways to get that new branding out to the community once it's available and get the word moving forward. Okay, it's very much a visual thing. There's no no question about it. That, but thank you, and uh, it uh, it certainly has been uh, uh, interesting uh, the uh, the progress of the discussion on that. And uh, uh, there is a mix of ideas. Uh, not everyone is on the same page, but uh, it's it's good to have uh, differences of opinion, and uh, they will be evaluated and and uh, scored. And we look forward to the results. Yes, uh, Mark, go ahead. Yeah, I can't see my full screen. Uh, uh, if uh, yeah, Sheila, uh, uh, at your command, we'll go back. Okay, that's good. All right. Yes, uh, Mark, I think I saw your hand go up there. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Mayhew. Um, I'm just trying, I wasn't aware of the procedure. So am I correct to understand that I think next week the committee is going to vote by secret ballot on which ones we want? And then after that, will it go out to the public for their opinions? And then after that, come back to council for a final decision? Is that, is that correct? So th the plan is, is to have the group that was there last week and maybe a few more will pop in. Um, quite a few people were away on vacation. So Mad Hatter is proposing to have that secret ballot vote next Tuesday from anybody who attends and then it would go to council. So there wouldn't be that, we wouldn't have the time for that community input. It would probably put us into May if we tried to do that at the earliest. Okay. All right, uh, yes, uh, Mike, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor Mayhew, I'd just like to maybe say that I think it would be very valuable to get the public's input on this before we make a final decision. I think it would be much easier to sell at that point. Yeah, yeah I, I, I don't disagree with that, Mike, uh, at all. Uh, uh, after the consultants leave town, uh, we're the ones that remain. And uh, I think uh, it would be uh, good to have uh, some uh, input. Uh, uh, we know there's members in our community that uh, uh, have uh, some skills on branding as well. and. Uh, their comments as a citizen of the community, not a professional opinion, but 
as a member of our community uh, would be interesting. Krista, uh, please uh, go ahead. Um, I feel of two minds because in my mind, I'm like, okay, I want to hear what the community has to say. Um, but on the flip side, we've gone through a long progress we've, of where we started and the fact that some of these images came to us with no color and how dynamic they became once color was added. Um, I can appreciate the comments from one business owners that said, you know, I didn't like that, but once we added the colors, I liked it better than all of them. And it was one of the more geometric ones that we'd taken a look at. I think too, there was a lot of creativity that came in the process in the sense of sometimes hostas were in there and to some people they were hostas and some people they were the stream or the curve of a river and sometimes they were a hill. And I think that this committee or the group that has uh, decided to participate in this or actively participated in this has a bit of understanding in the story behind why each component has been added or why each component has been considered. So um, I think our process becomes deciding why, why, why did we pick it? What's the story behind this logo? Um, and whether or not it comes down to a final few, maybe that's how it you know, pick between one, two, I'm not sure, but I really can appreciate the fact that we've had the opportunity to look at how come these made it this far and where they started off with, whether it was one cow in the field or two cows in the field or having the clock and not having the clock. So, um, yeah, anywho. I think, uh, yeah. Thank you for those comments. Yeah. Rick, go ahead. Um, maybe I'm confused, but I thought a lot of the original ideas that we've been working on or developing or whatever the correct term is came from the public in the beginning in their opportunity where they're not given opportunity to um, voice their uh, thoughts to this commit to that group not not to my knowledge in a formal way uh, i was thinking that uh, i understand that there's three uh prototypes that will be um uh given to the committee and i just thought with uh, our uh our digital technology and our, our news page uh, that uh, we've done surveys in the past and we could have just a quick fun survey to get uh, some public participation for a limited time. Um, Mark again, go ahead. Yeah, I'd like to move that we recommend to council that this go out to the public um, before a final decision is made. And if somebody would second it, I will give you my reasons for that afterwards. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I'll ask for a seconder. Yes, Mike, I've got that. And uh, we will need the, the help and the assistance of staff to find the, the least burdensome way to do this, uh, Mark. And I'm sure it'll probably be done on our website or uh, uh, and through our newsletter. But we have the, uh, the media uh, footprints to uh, assist us in that. And Mark, go ahead with your follow-up reasonings behind that. Well, I, I think we've been We've taken um, some heat because we didn't go to the public with some other decisions like uh, why wasn't there a public meeting about the landfill site, but that's a complicated issue or why wasn't there a, a public meeting about what we're doing with the arena, but there was you know, constraints there with what the funding could be used for and um, there was time constraints. This issue, they're really, it, it, to me, I don't think it would matter if, if this gets delayed a month or two. And um, it would be nice to, to get some input from the public before we made a final decision. Okay. Anybody else uh, have a comment they'd like to uh, use? Yes, uh, Krista Cowell, go ahead. We're often charged with making difficult decisions without having the public's input. And I reference, you referenced the arena. I was a part of the decision-making process for the arena. I can tell you how it's gone, how it went, why there wasn't public consultation. I've told you before in an email I shared with you, um, nobody thought we were gonna get the money. There was two weeks to put an application in. Uh, on a repeated basis, we're lucky to have what we have. We have a group of people on council who don't wanna spend money on the arena period. So getting them to support uh, having free money that we got from the government was challenging enough. So yeah, it would be great to have public consultation on every single little decision, but what would be the point of having elected officials 
Now, having said that, do I agree that aspects of our logo need to be including the public? Sure do. However, we have reached out to the public through some of the folks here, Mr. Harmsworth, Mr. Model, uh, Mrs. Choi, and many, many, many other business owners. And a small part of me is wondering what was the point of asking all of these people to give their time and energy to this project if ultimately it's just going to go out to the greater wider public who don't know the story, don't know the process, and don't know what we've gone through. Yep, go ahead, uh, Sheila. I think if you see it go out to the public, it would be a choice of one or two. I think yep. if we have the meeting, meeting on Tuesday, then we could maybe very quickly turn it around out of a choice of one or two. Um, I don't think they could have input into the process at this point based on what Mad Hatter has said. They, they don't really recommend it. Um, it they, is, they, want, uh, they, they want the representatives to provide that input, um, but I think we could probably turn around fairly quickly, like uh, which is your favorite one, one or two mm -hmm. out of these. I think if you could uh, reclassify the definition of that exercise as uh, even a market test, so to speak, and that's uh, done by the corporate world uh, on a daily basis. Uh, uh, there are think tanks that come up with particular products and then before they initiate them, they do a market test. Uh, in fact, London, Ontario is the market test capital of the world almost. Uh, and uh, they use that city as a, as a, a bedrock for market testing in North America. So uh, there's a, there, it could be re reviewed as such. Um, and uh, Amy, thank you for your patience. Go ahead, Phil, followed by you. Amy, first, please. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I wonder if that could be a part of a contest. You put out two or three of the logos and whichever one ends up being chosen through the branding process, we can select a winner um, that chose the correct one but still putting it out there for public to see, but maybe not in as much detail as selecting which one. That's Sorry, I'll let the uh, committee speak to that. Uh, I just don't want to get too deep in the weeds here and make it more complicated than it has to be. Mike, go ahead. I'm sorry, Mike, if you could be patient enough to let Phil go first and, and then uh, uh, following Phil. Phil, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Two comments. One is, I think if we're going to do this to the public, we need to provide the appropriate background information as to what we're doing with the logo. Where is it going to go? Is it, uh, is it going to be on every piece of letterhead? Is it going on the water tower? Those types of things so that they fully understand uh, what we're asking them uh, to make a decision on. Uh, the other suggestion I have is perhaps, is, can this be done in a way that where they're invited to participate? Uh, as opposed to sending it out to... You know, 2000 email addresses or publicizing it uh, uh, on the internet uh, where people can maybe copy it or use it or uh, trying to draw people in who are interested in it and willing to take the time to come to a meeting, a drop by the office at uh, the uh, in Southwest Middlesex and Glencoe or a couple other spots. Uh, so we get the interested people as opposed to people who are not putting the appropriate time into it and building upon what Krista said that this has taken a lot of uh, time and input and we don't want a casual um, offhand uh, comment or, or reaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it uh, depends on the level of sophistication a, a survey is done, I suppose, but uh, I see your point and uh, copyright infringement certainly has uh, got to be part of the uh, conversation too. Uh, uh, it cannot be copied or anything like that. Uh, Sheila's uh, um, nodding her head uh, with much you said there, Phil. So I know she's taking notes down. Uh, and uh, uh, we'll certainly uh, take that into consideration. Did I miss someone's hand uh, here? Uh, please Can I Jill's hand is up. Uh, yes, Jill, go ahead. Yeah, the uh, I think that um, we all had the same initial reaction. So when um, I was expecting the um, the kind of logos that we were have been looking at, um, for those of you that have been involved in the process today, which has been several, several hours of time and energy and effort, 
Um, I, I think that I was expecting the last two or three to go out to the public. So it was interesting to me, the rationale for why the consultants didn't recommend that approach. It's not that we can't do it and it is kind of complicated. You can't just send it out by survey monkey and expect that you're getting legitimate results. So it, it kind of depends how, how sophisticated you wanna be in tabulating results. Um, but as to some of the points that were already raised, what the consultants really stressed was that um, this has been an important process to get to where they are right now. So um, the, the conversations about what type of statements, what type of image, what type of uh, features and elements, and what are the words like, it, it, it was not so much just being here's the logo, it's supposed to be reflective of everything that um, the entire group who has participated, which isn't just the committee, right? It's not a committee that Sheila has helped with these consultants to put out there. It has been a much broader segment of um, the community um, than just even this group or, or the businesses. So it's been really an aim to reflect and that was kind of, that was the point was that it was supposed to really generate um, what it was that would be reflective of the community. It's not a small group, it's pretty, there are many, many people who have been involved in this process as it's gone underway and it has been several hours. So that was their rationale. Again, I, I think I was expecting it to go to the public initially as well. They recommend that doesn't usually get you kind of the results you're hoping for, but if that's what the group wants, then of course we can pursue that avenue. I just, I just thought it was interesting and important that, um, you know, the, some of the rationale behind that when we ask the same question. Thank you, Jill. Uh, just uh, Mark, I see your hand. Uh, Jill, uh, would this have to come, uh, um, like would this have to go before council as a recommendation or the, uh, this, uh, uh, the Economic Development Committee uh, uh, can't uh, override some of the decisions previously made by council. And that's what I'm concerned about here, Jill, as well. Uh, Mark, uh, uh, I noticed you sh shaking your head there. Go ahead. Uh, oh, thank you. On that. I, I like the mayor's calling this a market test because uh, I know I've participated in in those kind of things for farm products where I got a email and I had to click on um, different names and and uh, slogans logos for herbicide a new herbicide or a new fertilizer and you'd wonder why and it doesn't matter what you call it but these marketing people know this is important so even for farm products, they do this kind of of testing to see what kind of a what kind of a brand is is going to help sell a product. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're doing too. Okay, we'll uh, entertain uh, a few questions here. Two more questions from the floor if they want it, and we'll call the. I'm looking at the hour. It's three o'clock. We want to uh, uh, try to wrap this up. I thought ninety minutes would be ample, but. Uh, any further questions? Failing which has been moved by uh, Mark McGill and seconded by Mike Scholdice that uh, uh, staff uh, put uh, uh, an opinion poll out uh, in some manner, whether it can be virtual or in office. I think as long as we make the attempt to get some market uh, research back on it and uh, Last call for questions, and then I'll I'll uh, ask uh, the committee's opinion. Yes, uh, Mr. Cal, go ahead. Well, I would just be very careful that you don't hem yourself into a popularity vote. That um, even though it might be one of the last two that that go to the public, um, we we're paying people to make decisions for us or to help us make those decisions. I would want to make sure that if one of these choices gets one more vote than the other, that that's not the only decision in which one we pick. I don't disagree with that, but I think uh, we'll use those words market test again. And perhaps uh, there could be a codicil in that, that uh, uh, the purpose of this uh, uh, research is to just formulate uh, a market test on re consumer reaction. 
and that uh, uh, the uh, the parameters of the committee will make the decision. But uh, they're interested in a, a market test, uh, so to speak, or a public reaction, a visual reaction. But uh, those are all legitimate points. Uh, I have a motion on the floor. Mike, last question. Thank you, Mayor Mayhew. Um, I just wondered if it would be possible, I don't know whether it is or not, to narrow it down to three choices instead of two, so that we have just a little bit more of a, an option. Uh, that uh, There may be merit in that, Mike. Uh, instead of this or that, uh, we have uh, an option. A lot of that will be uh, conditional upon Mad Hatter uh, coming forth to the table. I, I thought they said they were going to bring back three. I, I just can't. I thought so, too, but we sure. discussed just having yeah. two. Yeah. Uh, uh, Councillor Cal, uh, followed by Sheila. Did Councillor Schulte suggest two? Oh, I'm so sorry. I forgot you haven't attended. Okay, well, we're not here to uh, spar at each other. Uh, we can put those issues to bed. I know it's important, but uh, we'll try to keep the the, uh, the conversation uh, uh, courteous as possible. Sheila, go ahead. We had a meeting with Mad Hatter on Tuesday last week, Tuesday or Thursday, I forget. There's so many meetings last week um, or this week. And they originally wanted the administration to cut the numbers down to three, possibly two, and we said no. So everyone's going to be seeing the same four again okay. that we had. I so see. Just, just as a heads up. Thank you for clarifying that, that, Sheila. That's what you will be voting on. So we didn't want to make that decision for anybody. We don't want to influence it. It's the community that makes the decision, and um, that's the way we look at it. It, we want we want it to be what the community sees us as and what we will be. All of, all committee members are equal here, and uh, there is a motion on the floor, and uh, we will call uh, uh, the uh, the question. Uh, and please uh, vote with your conscience. Uh, uh, no one's judging uh, how you vote. It's just uh, to get some uh, a definitive uh, opinion of this uh, this committee. Uh, moved by Mark, seconded by Mike, uh, that uh, kind of a public uh, opinion market test uh, be arranged. And I trust uh, Sheila will be able to uh, uh, handle that in her usual skillful manner. And I know that she has a good team behind her with uh, uh, Jill and, uh, and uh, Kendra. So uh, I'll call the question. All in favor of the motion, please raise your hand and just leave it up if you could for a minute. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Six, all opposed. Three, the motion carries six to three. Thank you, uh, Council Mark, a, a question. I see your hand still up. Yeah, sorry to keep asking so many questions. I would like to see the slogan go out to the public too. Are we gonna be seeing about the slogan on Tuesday or not? No, no <laughs> slogan yet. Okay. <laughs> As a committee member, they haven't really definitively zeroed in on a couple yet. Uh, uh, but uh, anyway, right. I know we've all submitted uh, examples of them. Uh, Sheila, go ahead. Yeah, I, I believe on Tuesday, they're just going to deal with the logo. They feel it's just too much to do, try to do both at the same meeting with so many people. So there will be a future meeting for the slogan as well, I believe. Um, I'm not exactly sure when that will be. So um, pro I, I'm thinking the way they're working a week from Tuesday would probably probably be the slogan when it came back. Okay. Thank you, Sheila. And, uh, and uh, I certainly, I wanna tell us, uh, Ed, uh, Sheila and administration, uh, it's not that we're trying to take our, our uh, make your life more difficult. It's just that we wanna make sure that uh, we, uh, uh, we do it right, and uh, everyone has a, a voice in the matter, and uh, we uh, can uh, regard it as uh, just additional information in which that uh, community can make decisions. Okay, uh, Jill, uh, keep me on track here. Uh, Sheila, how are you doing there for your reports? Are you okay? We just have one more thing to go through, yep. and um, it's just 2022 events. Um, Things are opening up a little bit and hopefully we can do a little bit more this year. 
So last year, the Christmas shopping tour was thrown together pretty quickly, but I think it was quite popular. And if that's something that we want to support as a shop local campaign, um, we can start working on it now and start making it stronger. Um, and then we've also been approached about the possibility of an earlier event. And um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to put Amy on the spot with this when she had kind of brought it to our attention. So maybe if Amy's comfortable with talking about that, that she could talk about it. And then following that, um, these things will need some volunteers to push them forward. And we're looking for some help from our committee if, if possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you. I think all our committee are volunteers uh, and has a history of volunteers, but Amy, you go ahead. Uh, we'll uh, look forward to your, your chat here. Sure, um, thank you. Sheila, are you referring to the farm, meet a farmer event? I, I believe so. Okay, um, so I, I ran across an advertisement for a meet a farmer event and it was somewhat like a seminar and there were different farmers from different locations that specialized in different things and they had um, canning was a topic organic farming one was agricultural tourism and I thought that would be a very neat sort of thing to put on in our community um, I'm not too sure where it's gone or if it's heading anywhere but I do think that would be a pretty neat event to have it, uh, the concept sounds interesting, and it is our most important uh, industry. Uh, Amy, uh, any comments from the committee on it? Uh, Amy, I don't want to cut you off. Is there any further comments you wish to make on that? No, I, I don't really even know to the which extent we could hold it or when it could happen. Um, it was just an idea, but I'd love any and all input. Well, we certainly would have an ally in the agricultural society, people like uh, Kate Lambert, and there's uh, many, many people among that organization that uh, would be extremely beneficial in terms of knowledge and, and uh, how it could go about. And even the Federation of Agriculture might help you uh, uh, in that. Uh, there is uh, lots of membership here, and we have representatives in the area that can uh, uh, give us information. Krista, go ahead. Um, I remember when you sent me that flyer, it also sort of talked about like a potluck where different farmers bring different things and then they eat all of it. And it reminded me, I believe uh, Lambton County did something similar as a major fundraiser before a pandemic where they put on a meal and it's similar to, I think, what Phil does with some of his um eating sessions I don't know what they're called <laughs> events um but it, every almost everything they eat, ate at that meal whether it was like a brunch I think had come from Lambton County so they had eggs from a chicken farmer baked pig pigs bacon from a a pork producer and then they had wheat from one of the mills that had been milled and they made pancakes out of them so um I'm not sure if we're prepared enough to do something like that. And I would be wonderful to see if we could be like, hey, Kara, let's do this for Middlesex County, but host it here at our fire place because it's our idea. So um, maybe we start small or maybe we start big, but I, I love the idea of bringing agricultural back and taking a look at our supply chain. And I think with the prices going up and things not being necessarily available, in Ontario, maybe if we shorten our supply chain and we encourage folks to shorten their supply chain, it gives the opportunity to people to know where their food is coming from and uh, make those choices for themselves. Yeah, certainly, it's a, a good visioning exercise. And uh, uh, Sheila, uh, go ahead. I, I'm actually a very firm believer in planning, and it would be difficult to pull it together for this year. But if we had a group that wanted to mm -hmm. Put their heads together and, and think about it for a future year it would be probably a great exercise for us and a positive event if mm -hmm. if there's anybody who wants to take that on that's great no i think uh, that's a wise word sheila planning if you're going to do it you will certainly want to uh leave a legacy of success uh, uh i know uh many of you are are uh, younger than me and uh, there was a, a function years ago in our municipality. It was called Rural Urban Night, and it was sponsored by the Rotary Club of Glencoe. And uh, it was uh, an evening uh, when uh, uh, 
rural Southwest Middlesex and urban Southwest Middlesex came together as one. And uh, it uh, always uh, was a great, uh, it's been some years since we've had that, but there was always keynote uh, speakers uh, as well. Uh, we'd bring in the uh, um, Minister of Agriculture or someone like that to speak, uh, a keynote speaker. And uh, it was always, uh, you know, uh, a couple of hundred people attended it. And uh, it was uh, the, the proceeds and the profits always went to uh, some noble endeavor uh, as well. So, but the planning is uh, part uh, of any success. Uh, so uh, Sheila's words are taken, taken well. Uh, any further questions? Uh, please raise your hand if I missed you. Yes, uh, Phil, go ahead. Uh, I think it's a great idea. And like Sheila, I think it does take planning. We do have tourism people at the county and Swatsea and that sort of thing who would, I think, be happy to help us if, depending on how far we want to promote it. it having people come to your farm is not uh, necessarily a straightforward thing. So if it's a meet the farmer at their farm, there are issues that have to deal with res respect to the uh, sanitation and uh, parking and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, it, it, it does take some planning, but I think it's a great idea uh, building on what Crystal's, Crystal said there about uh, recognizing our local supply chain and uh, promoting that uh, would be a wonderful idea and a real encouragement, I think, to a lot of uh, smaller beginner farmers. I agree. Yep. Uh, we'll continue this discussion on. We don't want to lose uh, the focus on uh, Sheila's initial inquiry as to uh, the uh, the uh, Christmas, uh, the uh, shop local aspect of it. Uh, we'll get back to that. But uh, um, Amy, that is an excellent idea. I think that anything we can do to uh, promote the relationship between farmers and uh the urbanites uh, is extremely positive in many ways, not just as a food source, but uh, even a, a, a better relationship between the two. I think it's uh, quite noble. Uh, so uh, we certainly will, uh, uh, we hope you pursue this conversation further and uh, add, don't uh, be afraid to reach out to your committee members. And uh, if they don't volunteer, appoint them and uh, we'll get uh, We'll get some feedback on that, but uh, I think uh, I think uh, to do it uh, this year uh, is uh, difficult. We also have to bear in mind too uh, the uh, calendar life of a farmer. Uh, farmers are exceptionally busy in the spring, uh, and it's very weather sensitive. Uh, there is no free time for farmers. Uh, as soon as the ground warms up, uh, these guys will be on the land, and they do not stop until that crops in the field. And of course, harvest time is another uh, uh, window. So the, between the final planning and the beginning of harvest, uh, there's a window in there that's kind of tight and that's the window that we would have to target. And that uh, may be uh, thought for consideration on that. Uh, Sheila, uh, your uh, initial remarks about uh, the uh, event uh, schedule for uh, uh, the community and uh, the necessity of starting to plan early for uh, uh, a welcome shop event or uh, uh, what's in our community, uh, our business community event. Uh, could you bring some closure to that uh, or any additional information or uh, how would you like the committee to proceed? Uh, do you need uh, um, uh, our, our opinion uh, to go ahead and pursue this uh, uh, as a recommendation? Yes, and if we could get some volunteers involved in uh, getting participation moving forward with it, that would be great. Okay, and uh, the volunteers and what type of capacity? Could you give us just a few examples of what you're looking for in terms of volunteerism? Sort to spread the word to um, have just see if we can get participation from businesses. Okay, all right, okay. And uh, uh, I think we could do that. There is a CCC meeting that has been uh, uh, scheduled uh, coming up uh, that uh, would certainly take the opportunity to introduce it to them. And uh, perhaps if you can email me uh, a request uh, for information or uh, uh, positioning on it, just send me a brief email and uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll take that to CCC 
And uh, I can also walk the street and uh, deliver any handouts and things like that, uh, Sheila, as well. And I'm sure there are others. So uh, uh, please, uh, uh, committee, touch base with Sheila if you can uh, spare some time. Uh, Krista, go ahead. One of the things we had talked about for the Christmas market as a follow-up is um, doing not just the Christmas market, but the whole Christmas tour, Christmas market component was doing a bit of a debrief uh, on it and taking a look at what the successes were, um, what the, like doing our own little SWOT analysis of it and what the opportunities are perhaps for next year. Um, it really, really, really one of the like big all-star wonderful components uh, about it was that it really got people out and shopping at some of the businesses, like the standalone businesses even though it was super cold really bitterly cold and there was a lot of wind it was impressive on how much um how many people in the community came out and in the dialogue about why we put on that event um and how we put on the, the end event it, we were mindful of the discord that covid has created with regards to restrictions associated with it and in the recent i think uh council Troy was at this event as well, but it was the teeny tiny summit that we participated in. I believe it was last week. And we had the opportunity to hear of um, a growing concern about community unity and how can we do community healing after some of the division that we've seen and we have seen in our own town. Um, and some of these events that are outside or bring the community together without necessarily doing it under the guise of community healing also offer that opportunity. So we started the process of talking about the Christmas um, events that we had had and how we could build on them or grow on them. So we're hoping to plan a debrief meeting from some of the businesses and some of the people who were involved in it and how we can make it better and perhaps even grow it to be on the main street. That's one of the things they'd really love to see. That takes a uh, next level of planning that we're hoping to move um, towards. So whereas we wouldn't necessarily use the um, train station, or maybe it would be used in a different capacity. We wouldn't be having vendors there. We'd have them on the main street, similar to how I think it was Rodney had theirs. Um, but that way, because what the piece that they, some of those business owners felt was that they didn't quite have all the way down the street participation for the businesses or benefit for all of the businesses down the street. Um, and with two new businesses open on the main street since last Christmas or will be open, um, I really think it's a great opportunity to showcase A, the new business development and B, some of the improvements to the facades that have been done and just really showcase our downtown um, with the new flower baskets, the boxes that should be coming in. Um, so anyways, that was a little bit of you know, a takeaway from the Christmas market. I hope that maybe Sheila or Amy can talk a little bit more about the tour that they had, um, or even Phil, because I know that we visited him on his tour. Um, and if there's ways that maybe we can have a whole debrief and talk about how we can make that tour better. I know there was feedback on getting more publicity out there. Um, and as it grows and becomes something we do regularly, I'm sure it'll become a staple. Maybe we had a home tour in it now that COVID has lifted. Okay, thank you. And uh, I, I think uh, it's, it's a good program. And I think our timing, Amy, is really good this year as well, because uh, uh, we're, we're cut. there's light at the end of the tunnel on COVID. Uh, as uh, Sheila's drawn attention to, there are new businesses on this on the street. And I think it should be also mentioned that there are businesses that have changed hands on the street uh, as well. And of course, the most notable recent one would be the pharmacy uh, has sold and uh, new owners are there. So it, uh, it, it's good uh, uh, you have new ownership uh, and I think we kick off uh, the holiday season with some type of event like that. Uh, it, uh, it shows our character and our, our stamina and our, our, uh, our excitement about uh, what we vision for the future too. So uh, I think uh, it, it's, uh, it's, the time is impeccable for something like that. Uh, it's kind of a, a new beginning and uh, with new faces. So I think it's quite important. Okay, um, Sheila, uh, anything else? For, uh, do, you want, uh, do you want a recommendation that we proceed with? Uh, do you want these events identified and a recommendation to uh, 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 
proceed with this, or is it just uh, uh, the courtesy of extending an invitation to the committee for their volunteer help in this? Well, I think I think if we have the um, recommendation that we look into the participation in those in the future, that would be great. And we can work on definite ideas for the next, well, I guess in between the next meet, where, where are we? Yeah, if we could bring ideas back for the next meeting, that would be best. Okay, all right. So uh, we'll, uh, uh, I think what I'd like to see as chair, if we can endorse in, in, in uh, what, what is the, the title of this uh, particular event, Amy? What do you refer to this as? Uh, uh, the uh, the first uh, initial uh, event uh, in terms of that uh, pre-Christmas uh, event, you're referring to that as what? Is it, does it have a legitimate name or? That was a country Christmas tour. Country Christmas tour. Okay, so uh, I think, I think uh, if we could have an, ex an acceptance in principle to proceed with a country Christmas tour and ask uh, uh, for volunteers, uh, I think that would be uh, somewhat the nature of the motion. Rick, I see your hand up. Go, go ahead. I'll make that motion. Okay. And a seconder for that. Thanks, Mike. Uh, so we're accepting in principle that we pursue uh, the development of our country Christmas again, and that uh, uh, we uh, uh, formulate uh, plans in more precise details at the next meeting. And furthermore, that uh, volunteers will be required for this. Okay, any questions? Failing, not seeing any hands, I'll call the question all in favor. It's all opposed, carried. Okay, and that too will be in our report to uh, submit to council. And uh, we won't lose uh, sight, Amy, of that uh, idea that you uh, put on the floor about uh, the uh, uh, core relationship from farm to fork, and things like that. That's pretty important stuff. Uh, and we'll uh, try to initiate some good planning into that. Okay, Sheila, have we missed anything in terms of economic development reports? I am complete with my report. Um, the only thing I will mention is uh, this morning, um, within a meeting earlier, the county noted that they have a um, survey out for the official plan update. And I've sent that to everybody just as the meeting started. So if you want to share that information in the community and ask people to take part in that, that would be wonderful. It's very important. Um, any kind of thoughts about how we want to see our communities move forward is, is really necessary to make that a positive experience. Exactly. And then I don't know if we mentioned it, but last night at the meeting, as well as the CIP, there was a lighting and a nuisance lighting bylaw passed for our community. So that may be of interest to everyone. And uh, we will probably talk about that more in another newsletter as we move forward. So I think those were the two things that I'd just like to add. Otherwise, I think we covered a lot of ground. Okay, sounds good. So thank you very much for that uh, report. I'm um, just looking at the time. I'd like to get this uh, meeting over in two hours. We have a few minutes left. Uh, number seven is new business. Uh, are there any subjects that the committee wish to uh, bring forward? Seeing none, uh, any announcements? Uh, yes, Rick, go ahead. Um, it's not an announcement, but it fits somewhere in between what we just finished talking about. Have you made any plans for a candidate day meeting or discussion? Yes, there'll be a letter, letter uh, submitted to staff uh, tomorrow, Rick, and it'll be going out. Uh, Barb and I have uh, been talking about it, and uh, the uh, uh, I'll be uh, uh, working on that this evening. And there'll be a communication going out uh, either tomorrow or Monday. And uh, uh, there are some questions, and I think I'll talk to you personally on that at some point. Maybe we can grab a coffee or something, uh, because it's uh, it's certainly uh, 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 it wouldn't be candid today if uh, there wasn't a meal involved somewhere. And I'm not a very good cook, 
and I know you are, so uh, we certainly would need uh, a sponsoring body to uh, uh, cook a, a dinner or, or bring in a drive through dinner or something. I know you have one coming up, but I, I was wondering if the Lions might consider one for Canada Day again as well. But uh, 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 Barbara and I are discussing that uh, tomorrow. Uh, we begin our discussions and uh, we'll reach out to former committee members, hoping that they'll still be a part of our committee and uh, anyone else that wants to uh, join a good committee, the Canada Day Committee uh, certainly needs you. And uh, it must be said too, that uh, the Lions Club are key players in this as they are in many things. And we certainly need the Lions uh, uh, to uh, be uh, a proponent of a Canada Day celebration too. So Rick, uh, I'm going to start tomorrow with Barbara and I'll grab a coffee with you early next week. Okay. I'll give you a call. Thank you. Um, yes. Uh, announcements. Uh, no, I don't see any, any more. Uh, there is uh, tickets available at Ace Hardware for a Lions dinner on March 17th. There's one in Melbourne this Saturday, drive through dinner. Hathaway Feeds may still have some tickets. And don't forget to set your clocks uh, ahead on Sunday. Future meetings, June 2nd. We've already got some things on the agenda for that meeting. Uh, Jill, I want to thank you, Kendra, Sheila, and uh, Greg. Uh, I certainly, uh, I know uh, he's, uh, he's no longer with us, but uh, we certainly appreciate his uh, participation in this meeting as well. We thank staff. And uh, with uh, nothing else being said, no hands up. Yes, Sheila, one other just, thing. Just have one, sorry, I just see saying her name's here. Just to let her know the next process um, for her, the uh, recommendation to have her become a member will go to council. And then once that is uh, set in stone, then she becomes a member. Okay, sounds good. And, uh, we will adjourn the meeting at 3.31. Okay, one minute past uh, the maximum time. Thanks very much, everybody. We'll see you.